Christians basically have two options in the face of the societal decline that we see happening all around us. The first is to go out into the world courageously challenging corruption, injustice, immorality and godlessness and spreading the uncompromising gospel about an uncompromising saviour to the four corners of the world. To march, sign petitions, preach, campaign, start initiatives, movements, prayer groups, evangelism projects and generally mobilise ourselves to change lives and save souls. If we take that option we will suffer persecution and hatred as we go but we will change things. The second option, which isn't really an option at all, is to keep retreating and allowing the darkness to advance, to keep hiding behind our four walls with our churchianity, talking a good game but never putting it into action, attending endless conferences and shows, hearing endless sermons, but never really getting into the wheelbarrow with God, never really taking a stand for truth and holiness in society, never really challenging the evil in our culture because we're simply too entertained by it to hate it, and all the while hoping the rapture happens quickly so that we're evacuated from the world before it gets too painful. If we take that route, we will one day wake up realising there's nowhere left to run and no more ground to give up, and we'll be forced to face persecution and hatred anyway, or at least our children will, or their children will, and we will not have changed a thing, and God will want to know why we were so cowardly. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be part of the generation that stands before God having taken that second option. When we consider the heroes of the faith from history that face jail, persecution and death, I would consider it something of an embarrassment to stand beside them having been the ones who let such a decline happen on our watch and who, even if the Lord comes back, does so to find us cowering in a corner. But we'll talk more about that in the final part of this series. For now, we must prepare ourselves for the fact that whichever option we take, there is persecution ahead for us Christians. These are urgent times. The gap between us and the world is undoubtedly widening. Already, there are reports of Christian cafe owners being threatened with arrest for displaying Bible verses on their TV screens. Christian foster carers are being banned from adopting children because of their views on homosexuality. Christians are being banned from wearing crosses around their neck at work and are generally being penalised and forced to face disciplinary action for their faith sometimes even being fired for their refusal to act against their consciences. The government is making it illegal for pastors to refuse to marry gay people in church. Speaking God's word in public is becoming illegal under new hate speech laws. Christian midwives are being told they can no longer opt out of assisting with abortions. The freedom to remove children from sex education classes is also under attack. In fact, the civil law is starting to contradict God's moral law in almost every sphere of life and Christians are under increasing pressure to abandon their principles and to conform to the ideology of the age. What should our reaction be in the face of such pressure? When the moral law becomes illegal, what do we do? What does the Bible command? Do we continue to follow our consciences and the voice of the Spirit, even if it contradicts human authority? What should we do when persecution comes? These are important questions because they affect us right now.